Okay, going forward, the table here shows the chemicals or agents or drugs that affect the autonomic nervous system. For example, agonist here implies that these agents here can stimulate the ANS receptors, while the antagonist here means that these agents or drugs or chemicals can actually inhibit the autonomic receptors. All right, fantastic. This sign here represents the parasympathetic nervous system, whereas this sign here represents the sympathetic nervous system. These are the transmitters that affect the autonomic receptors. All right, fantastic. Now, now for the ganglia, all right, the neurotransmitter used is acetylcholine. These drugs nicotine and low doses of metacomine can actually activate the nicotinic receptors all right good whereas a very high dose of the same nicotine would inhibit or deactivate the nicotinic receptors when the nicotinic receptors are deactivated acetylcholine cannot act on those receptors and in fact acetylcholine release would be inhibited all right fantastic for the postganglionic parasympathetic endings the neurotransmitter used here is acetylcholine this is the postganglionic cholinergic or muscarinic receptor good pilocaine physostigmine and neostigmine activate the muscarinic receptor of the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron all right Whereas atropine is a drug that inhibits the muscarinic receptor of the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron. All right, fantastic. Now, for the postganglionic sympathetic neuron or nerve fiber, the neurotransmitters used are no adrenaline and adrenaline. Remember, the receptors here are the alpha and beta receptors. All right, for the alpha receptors, phenyl heparin are agonist so they stimulate the alpha receptors of the postganglionic sympathetic endings whereas the phenotholamines are inhibitors of the alpha receptors of the postganglionic sympathetic endings all right good for the beta receptors the isoprenoline can actually stimulate the beta 1 receptors whereas albuterol stimulates specifically the beta 2 receptors all right the antagonists or the inhibitors of these beta receptors are one the propanolol and timolol all right these agents or drugs can actually inhibit these beta receptors from functioning so they can inhibit adrenaline or not adrenaline from binding to these beta 1 and beta 2 receptors okay these agents or chemicals or drugs could be used to manage or treat some autonomic dysfunctions all right for example in the heart good the agonists such as phenylephrine and the isoprenoline are actually used to manage conditions such as shock hypotension and um, bronchoconstriction all right good abuterol is a drug that can be used to manage asthmatic patient this is because it can cause bronchodilation so when the lungs are dilated more air can get into the lungs and to the body tissues bronchodilation all right propanolol is a drug that can be used to manage hypertensive patients it is also used to treat um, cardiac arrhythmias and all conditions that results into increased heart rates cardiac output and bp all right Timolol is a drug that can be used to treat glaucoma, all right? So it helps to reduce the high intraocular pressure of the eye. The OPT doctors use these drugs very well, all right? Good. You will learn the mechanism of actions, the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of these agents regarding the autonomic nervous system and their dysfunctions in ANS pharmacology, all right? Going forward... We shall now look at some autonomic disorders, problems that are associated with ANS dysfunctions, all right? 
dysautonomia can cause one orthostatic postural hypotension. This is very common in the military, all right, or in people who stand for a very long time, all right. Good. It can also cause disorders in blood pressure, good, disorders of the heart, breathing and swallowing disorders, erectile dysfunctions in men, yes, bowel and bladder disorders, fatigue, that is tiredness, syncope or passing out are also caused by autonomic disorders. And then you have cognitive impairments, that is problems with your thinking can also arise when you have this autonomia all right all right also light headedness going forward now impairments in the body's ability to fight or overcome gravity is known as the autostatic intolerance okay now gravity always wants to keep us down when you are overpowered by gravity you won't want to do anything in life you just want to remain on the ground or remain on your bed sleeping there are reflexes in the body that helps us to overcome gravity and that's why we are able to rise from the beds to do our work or daily activity all right we shall discuss more on this when we get to spinal reflexes all right during standing gravitational force pulls blood into the abdomen and the leg you know whenever you are standing the force of gravity is acting on the circulatory system all right Remember that gravity is the downward pull of an object towards the center of the earth. So, whenever you are standing, blood moves from the head or upper part of the body to the lower abdomen and the legs. Okay, this is caused by gravitational force because at that point, gravitational force is acting on you and it has effects on your circulatory system pushing blood from the upper parts to the lower parts of the body all right good normally the autonomic nervous system will try to inhibit this downward pull of blood by constricting the blood vessels and pushing the blood to the brain all right now you know what this does because if your brain lacks blood it will lack oxygen and nutrients therefore fainting can occur without this autonomic nervous system compensation whenever we stand we'll just faint all right because the whole blood is pulled from the upper to the lower part of the body so your brain lacks blood and you just collapse all right thank god for the autonomic nervous system all right so it constricts blood vessels thereby pushing the blood or maintaining blood flow to the brain and the upper part of the body this would help to avert fainting or collapsing all right good now in this autonomia when there are disorders with the autonomic nervous system the baroreceptor reflexes and all other bio biological reflexes are impaired they are not functioning well thus the person feels one dizzy now the blood is moved from the head to the legs this can cause dizziness in a person because when the brains are lacking blood and nutrients and oxygen you become very very dizzy all right good it can also cause light headedness it's like your head as big as it is 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 very light and empty like there's nothing in it that even the brain is missing all right light headed okay good now and may even pass out this person even pass out or faints if nothing is being done all right this person may even pass out or collapse all right in the military during their arrays they stay for a very long time now sometimes you see that in parades one of the um military men could just fall that's falling is a compensatory mechanism because it helps to move blood back to the brain okay the person will not die you 
you know you know you have been standing for so long so gravitational force has already pulled blood from your head down to the leg the next thing is that you feel dizzy and then you collapse in parades as you are collapsing blood flows back to the head and after some time you become conscious you wake up so autostatic postural hypotensions are very common in the military all right fantastic okay we have come to the end of today's model all right our quiz for today is a very simple one well let's discuss the relevance of autonomic transmitter in the management of glaucoma this is specifically for optometry students in this team all right so we'll do that number two discuss the applications of ans physiology in managing migraines and in managing erectile dysfunctions this is for medical that is medicine and surgery students anatomy students and physiology students thank you bye